Catalina's Top 5 at 555. Presented by Slapsticks Comedy Club. For ticket information, go to slapstickscomedy.com. I'll be doing stand-up on Saturday at 9.15, but great shows uh, this weekend long. Paul Paul Varghese uh, coming in. Great, great comic out of Dallas. I really love him. So uh, book him up Friday and Saturday. Uh, He's the headliner this weekend. So coming out to Slap 6 Comedy Club and see him. All right, top five best new matchups in the SEC. Look, I've been very negative about this, and I will probably continue to be. But if we're going to... You know, if this is a new reality, let's talk about some of the good things that are going to come out of it. So these are the best five to me. Feel free to debate me. Uh, I'm not always right, but most of the time. Uh, Number five, Oklahoma versus LSU. I can't wait to see this one uh, more often than not. I think it'll be a great one. I think it's going to be a great uh, budding rivalry. I sure hope it's better than the game two years ago. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Because that wasn't a great game by any stretch of the imagination. But, yeah, I think Oklahoma and LSU will be a real fun one. I mean, LSU's had their number. Uh, beat them in the national title game back in, I believe, that was 03 when Oklahoma had what at the time was arguably the greatest college football team of all time, if you'll mm. remember that hype that they yeah. had with Jason White and all that. And then uh, LSU upset them in a very defensive game, a mm. low-scoring game of what was the final, like 21-14. Yeah. And, uh, and that really, you know, Oklahoma had won the title in 2000, but LSU then just – I mean, if LSU doesn't beat them in that title game and Oklahoma wins what would have been their, I believe, their eighth title and they would have had two under Stoops in like four years' time, I mean, maybe they win a couple more of the other ones they appeared in as a result of that. But instead, they've just gone over for like, you know, they're like, what, 0-4, 0-5 in their last, you know, few championship appearances. So, yeah, um, just a little history there between those two. And, yeah, I think that'll be a great matchup, Oklahoma-LSU. All right, number four, and this is a game that uh, I will not be able to watch without like getting queasy, but uh, Texas and Florida. Both these schools kind of have similar attitudes about themselves in, in, in good and bad ways, but I think this one will be a good one, uh, and especially since uh, you know these, these are both the university ofs in the state. Yeah, uh, Arrogance Bowl? Is that yeah. a good name for it? Yeah. No, uh, I'm just kidding. That, uh, is that a – you hate both of them. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, going to be tough. Yeah. It would be tough. No, I think it's cool. I mean, just seeing that graphic, I've never seen yeah, Florida versus a, Texas like that. See, and I think that's good for college football. Yeah. The new – like, there's some tradition-rich rivalries that are fantastic, but uh, there's got to be so many more options, and maybe this is going to create some. Yeah, I mean, I really – I don't know the last time I can find out quickly, but I don't think I've ever seen Texas and Florida playing football, much less seeing them in a graphic like that. So, yeah, I mean, two very similar schools as far as their stature within their own states. They may not play for 10 years, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is when do they play? It's two football hotbeds, so I'm sure there will be some Florida athlete versus Texas athlete trash Mm -hmm. talking. Yeah, that'll be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Other than the fact that, like, I'll feel like there's spiders all over me while it's on on the air. Good news (laughs) is, Paul, somebody will have to lose that game. (laughs) Yeah. Probably not the one I'll What would you rather do? Get dressed up for Halloween, Uh go to a parade, watch fireworks, which you've already slipped on that. Yeah. Or root for one of those two teams. I'd rather I'd rather go to a parade. <laughs> I'd rather go to a parade. So uh, they've played three times. Mm-hmm. Uh, they played in 1940 in Gainesville, Texas, won that 26 nothing. They played in 1939 in Austin, Texas, won 12 nothing. And then in 1924, so they haven't played in almost 100. Yeah, so 24, 39, and yeah, they haven't played since 1940. Uh, wow. Texas, two and one or two wins for Texas. One tie. Hitler was still in power when they last played. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's rising to power. Yeah. He's about to really have some power. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Uh, number three, Oklahoma versus Georgia. This one, this they one I'm going to love. Yeah, they played, they played recently too. too. Great and game. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, great game. And oh, so, you had a huge lead at halftime, didn't they? Yeah. And I, I think this one, I think this one has been one of those. Uh, and, and look, as... Um, Florida and Texas are similar in my mind, at least a little bit. Now, granted, Georgia does not have near the history of Oklahoma, but it is the smaller state to the north of the bigger football state. Uh, and so there's that kind of vibe where uh, that's together. And Georgia has got it rolling now where they're they're very, very good every year. They just have not broken through. And of course, they haven't won a national championship since Herschel Walker uh, played for them. So they were remember- on that list of teams that seem like they always underperformed Mm -hmm. with who they were or what the expectation they perform at a high level but they don't win ultimately what matters and that's national titles uh but do you remember the other game other than the the playoff game that they played in 
No, you can't because they've only played one time. Okay. Yeah, that was it. That was okay, the only time they've type ever thing. played was a 54-48. I guess the SEC defenses were gone that day or, mm. or something, but that was that was a high-powered game. And Oklahoma, you know, miss, uh, high-power U, they got – Outpowered by the Bulldogs that day. Yeah. Number two, Texas versus LSU. Uh, look, a &M, Saw that recently. Yeah, we saw it recently. It was really good. A&M and LSU is a great uh, new SEC. Well, they were rivals before the yep, SEC and didn't were. play for a long time. Uh, so I have no reason to think that Texas and LSU also won't be uh, a fantastic rivalry. And look, I did intentionally leave out OU and A&M, uh, Texas and A&M, and Texas and Arkansas off this list because we know that those were good rivalry. Like, we know that those worked. It wasn't a good rivalry, OU and A&M, but Texas and A&M is an all-time rivalry. Texas and Arkansas was an all-time rivalry back in the day, so I left those out. But I think this one, Texas, Texas and LSU. Texas has a 9-8 to eight lead in the mm -hmm. series. They played 18 times. It was a tie. We know the last time they played was Joey Burrow, and they went down to Austin, had a huge fourth down comp uh, completion, and and just uh, just how they had too much that day, although Texas played them straight up. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I've talked about when people have mentioned UT and the SEC. Yeah, this could be a struggle at times, but some of their best games, even when they've been average for a decade, have been against the bigger-name teams. It's almost like that gets them juiced up. I'm not saying they win a lot of them, but they also have had preparation time for some of those games as well. You're right. Like the bowl game, you got a whole month to prepare. And, you know, I remember what the Georgia fans were saying about that game mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. But you're also now not doing it on occasion. You're doing it almost every single week. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, you know, a major difference there. If they can find that once, you know, every big game magic and, and actually do it consistently, then Texas would be the program that, that they act like. And I don't mean that as a negative. It's just that they would have more – actions to back up their words uh if they performed like that so we'll see maybe that maybe that is maybe they get juiced up for all these now i don't know uh, yeah. maybe the big 12 is just boring who knows yeah and number one of course this is obvious this is the one that everyone wants to see all the time it's gonna be oklahoma and alabama yeah i mean that's that's the one you'd want to see uh, as much as these new things. But, uh, I mean, I can't imagine. Uh, and, look, even if this was just a cross-conference rivalry on, like, a four-year home-home-home-home deal, I would be excited for this. So, I mean, this, 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 is, this is great no matter what. I mean, OU and Alabama playing each other, again, that's – that's Ohio State and Notre Dame. That's I mean, there's there's only six so, times. Yeah, there's only so many times, like so many matchups like this that are so great that that you'd want to watch them anytime. They've played six times. Six times Oklahoma's won three. Alabama's won the last one in 2018. They had one tie as well. That's a combined 25 national championships. Although Alabama's 18, I'm sure there's probably like a couple of UPIs in there. I don't know that to be sure or not, but Alabama's like the runaway national champion of champions and Oklahoma I think's 